may not have been the best mattress in the world, but at least it didn't flay. Now I have to get onto that issue of changing the oil on this bike. At least here it's got a flat surface and it's not in the dirt, so it should be a little less messy. Probably not. So the first thing to do is warm the engine up. Might take it for a little spin. It just brings up any little particles off the bottom and also heats up the oil so it just flows out easier. So first up is to remove the drain bolt and then once that's done, little side bolts and then get the screen thing here that collects particles out. Luckily I went to St Vinnie's and got some rags. They actually give me a towel to soak up any real messes. So first out with the drain bolt, then let the old oil drain out. Next take out the bolt that holds the plate on. Off with the plate and pull the screen out. Good news is there's no metal filings from inside the engine. So your oil filter and gasket goes in this side. Out with the old oil filter, in with the new. New gasket goes on. I actually bought a ratchet spanner just for this task as it's painfully slow with a normal spanner as the bolts are in tight areas and you can't spin the shifter right round. Plate back on the other side, then the drain bolt. Then the most important thing, the new oil. Job done. Bye to the dodgy motel and we we're on the road again. I got back out onto the road. I wanted to check out one place in Albany that sounded interesting after a quick stop to fill up. I headed to the south side of the southern peninsula. This is a natural bridge and the gap, and it wouldn't be the southwest of WA if it wasn't raining during winter. I might get a complex that they don't want me here if it keeps going on. I made my way down the short path first to Natural Bridge. Natural Bridge is granite rock, which is eroded over time by waves from the Southern Ocean. It actually looks like it's assembled like a brick arch with those cracks in the granite. The weight of all the pieces stopping it from falling. I then walked up to the gap, which is only a couple of hundred metres from the bridge. Again, the waves have slowly eaten away at the granite over millions of years. This whole coastline with its islands, beaches, bays and peninsulas has its own rugged beauty, tucked away here in the south. I headed back towards town. Albany is the oldest colonial settlement in Western Australia. It was founded on the 26th of December, 1826, as a military outpost of New South Wales for the purpose of forestalling French ambitions in the region. This is Shoal Bay, and you can see why Albany was originally going to be the capital of WA. Nice big harbour, protected waters back in the day. Very important. But, Perth got it. <laughs> it was the gateway to the eastern goldfields, and it was the main shipping port between Britain and its Australian colonies. Nowadays, the town's main industries are tourism, fishing, timber, wood chips, and agriculture. So with the weather gods not on my side, I'm going to continue west till I find that sunshine I'm keen on. And Walpole, I think, is the next place to have a look at. After Denmark. Where's Denmark before Walpole? I'll find out.
continued west through the very green and very wet farmlands. I spotted something on the side of the road, so I went back to check it out. The random stuff you come across riding along the road. This guy's got a collection of really old tractors. I'm not into tractors, but I thought they might make a good subject for a photo or two. What's the name of the tractor off that movie Cars? Looks like him. <laughs> you know when something's got wood wheels? It's pretty old. I do love the simplicity of the design. It's all about function over form. Love a bit of randomness. I rode through Denmark, the town, not the country. found something I wanted to check out and it looked like there were farm roads I could take to get there. So I turned off the main road to go and explore. We're soon on dirt roads. I've said it before Exploring dirt farm roads through the hills always brings a smile to my face. Narrow tree-lined dirt roads that open up onto large grazing land. My farm road turned into a track through bushland. A little rough, but all good. the map wouldn't pick that road, so I thought I'd try it anyway. About a kilometre up, it had a no entry sign. It was only a few more kilometres to get there, but not sure why it had a no entry sign, I decided to take the long way around. So, back down I went. I turned onto the track and spotted a sign that might be the reason for the no entry sign on the other road. The road started to climb as I made my way through the forest, passing rather large and very tall trees. Nearly missed it. Here's a frame view that's not too bad at all. A couple of islands in the distance. Bet it's really good when the sun's out. I have a suspicion that this bird hasn't worked out it can actually fly. Continued up the single dirt lane as the trees got even bigger. I seem to come across uh, the giant trees of this country, we'll call it, and just keep finding spots where they happen to be massive trees. So we're going to have a quick walk along here. Apparently there's a big one down the end, about a kilometre away. My bike's 
here there's no one else here hopefully nobody wants my gear more than I do this forest is famous for its red tingle eucalyptus trees they are only found in the southeast of Western Australia the red tingles have very large bases as they have a shallow root system which enables them to harvest water and nutrition from the very thin topsoil. The tree's large bases provide stability and stop them from falling over. Structurally I'd say it's not sound but it seems to be doing the job. How's this thing standing? I'm under the tree. It is bizarre to be standing under a tree or inside the tree under. It's really hard to show how wide these things are unless you're standing next to them. This thing's got it all going on. Look at the twist in this. The red tingles have a thick layer of bark which protects them from bushfires. But if the bark is damaged, say from a falling branch, and a fire comes through, it can burn the unprotected part of the tree, then smoulder over time, burning away the core at its base. And that is how they hollow out. How's that? It's still growing. It's still got green leaves on it. Look how the bark on this one sort of twists around the tree. I've never seen that before. Super cool though. Okay, <laughs> the other ones are just playing. Oh, this one. I've mentioned before how the camera doesn't show the real size of things. Well, I've got an idea. Scale time. They can grow as high as 75 metres, have bases with circumferences of up to 24 metres, and a lot of the older trees are over 400 years old. The bark on the trees almost looks like Chewbacca's fur. I can't think of anything else <laughs> to compare it to, but that's what it looks like. Love getting back to my bike and it's still here and nothing's stolen. So the plan now, I should really make one up, I think I'll camp local so I don't have the issue of last night getting there and it's on dusk and didn't work out and then yeah hasn't been a big day but it's been a relaxed day I'm liking that tomorrow hopefully I'll get near Margaret River wiki camp letting me down it won't load past 16% oh there it goes must have been updating Whew. Now to find somewhere. A quick search and I found a place that looked good. This is where I turned around at the no entry sign. So a good call not to go up a one way road. pulled into Walpole and got some supplies. Then headed to the campsite I found. Scored a cool little camp spot, nobody around. It's actually just got bark down here which is, well, stop the mud. <laughs> And the tent pegs still go in. Just sitting up tent now. Get that done before dark. Oh, patch of blue sky. Maybe I won't get rained on tonight. Must mean I'm getting close to the west coast. So yeah, it's pretty chilled, which is good. <laughs> I'm enjoying that. Just going to sit up and yeah, do not a lot. It would be good to be back in the tent. Nothing wrong with dodgy motels, but it'd be good to be back in the tent. I may as well have a sticky beak while I'm here, see what's around. Well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> An empty little bay, I guess.
Looks like there's tea tree in the water. Hopefully it's tea tree. The tannins from the tea tree. Otherwise it's something else that's brown. It is good to stop once in a while. We're hoping to see sun tomorrow. Phew. Getting hungry. Because I'm close to a town Walpole, a bit of luxury for dinner tonight. Something cold, refrigerated, yogurt. Not just one. I have a hole. Mm. And they're berries, because I like berries. After another fun day of riding and exploring, it was time to sleep. <laughs>